You know where you are? is Appetite for Distortion. Welcome to the podcast, Appetite for Distortion, episode number 478. My name is Brando. His name is Harrison Rex. Yeah baby brownstone he's just gonna help me set up this interview right now with lou graham because we had to put him uh put him away while i was interviewing lou for the 10 or 15 minutes or so so just to set it up if you're familiar with me in the show i also work with uh i work for premier radio networks and iheart radio when we do these radio tours help people promote whatever they're promoting the different radio stations across the country and lou promoting that He and Farner are finally getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So I had my time with him. It's just a little. So that's why the setup's going to be a little weird, but I call it organic. And same thing with the ending. So without further ado, can you say Lou? Lou? Lou Graham? All right. It'll it'll happen. Lou Graham, ladies and gentlemen, an appetite for distortion. Thanks, guys. All right, Lou. Interestingly enough, your next interview is with me. <laughs> oh, really? How, yeah, did you, how did you wiggle into the second spot? I, I like I that. I guess you got to know somebody, right? That phrasing, you're right. I have to know. I mean, I've been working at iHeart for 10 plus years, but I mean, I've been working. It, this is a beautiful segue. I, I've been in radio for 20 plus, classic rock all throughout. Foreigner is a part of my background. Awesome. Uh, but to, to do this tour, so I I so here's the thing. I'm like so many wearing so many different hats. Not even though I'm not wearing a hat currently. So yes, I'm I'm the tour producer right now. I have this podcast which is on the Q1043 uh, website, the classic rock station in New York City on the iHeart Radio mm-hmm. app. And sometimes I go into work live events like this Saturday. I'm going to be working the radio broadcast of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, That's awesome. Where's that based out of? That's going to be in New York City. So I'm going to be nice. with my boss just uh, cooped up in a uh, radio studio, but still. Which station is 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 producing that? It's going to be produced by Premier Radio Networks. Okay. And, cool. and that goes out on all the classic rock and rock, uh, I mean, all across the country. You know, we're doing the radio version of it while Disney Plus does the TV version. So Very cool. People should know so that. So if you watch Disney Plus for, for the visual and had your station on for the, for the audio, it would be awesome, wouldn't it? That, that's, a, that's pretty much what we're going to do in studio, actually. So I get to watch you be inducted while making sure nobody curses. Because if anybody, <laughs> <laughs> if anybody you, curses you, on the radio, you, it's my Are you my the fault. one that has the bleep button close by? Yeah, I got the dumb button right now. What <laughs> is it, why... a, a three- or five-second delay that gives you time well, to... Here's a funny story that it used to be 40, but we've had to bump it up. And you'll never guess the band that made us had to. Oh, I'm uh, Marcus Marcus Mumford from Mumford and Sons just cursed up a storm, and oh. we're like, we like we need like an eighty second delay now. So that's a whole other. Story. It sounds like he was cursing nonstop. Yeah, well, he was drinking a little bit. I mean, I don't know. Is that how you're going to celebrate your Rock and Roll Hall of Fame win? I don't know. If... I don't drink. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. I don't know. Maybe some soda. Or water? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But but <laughs> alcohol and uh, illicit drugs uh, over thirty five years now. Congratulations! It's been about eight years for me without uh, alcohol. And how much does that mean to you? Do you think that you was there a point where you didn't think that you would? I hate to say because so many of our rock star heroes don't make it to this point. Was there a point where you're like, I don't know if I'm gonna see the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm just going down like you know, live fast, die young. Was that a Part of your mentality? Yeah, I, I wasn't thinking about the Rock and Hall of Fame. I was thinking about my kids growing up. Mm. You know, but I, but I was right there. I was oh. right there. And, and uh, I, I, honestly, uh, um, I prayed to my Lord and Savior, and and he, he gave me the strength to, to call my attorney, who was a friend of mine, and he booked me into Hazleton. 
And instead of flying home in the condition I was in, I flew to Detroit and was met by uh, uh, some reps from Hazleton and they drove me to Hazleton. It was the best 30 days I ever spent in my life. I appreciate you you sharing that because I often talk about mental health and addiction on this as you we'll get to it before we I move you on to the next station as you can tell by my background my Guns N' Roses themed podcast it's just kind of just a connection we'll get to Slash performing at the Hall of Fame and everything nice. but to, to focus again if while we're on the topic mm -hmm. uh, mental health and and an addiction when you get to this you know I don't know if it's the speech is going on through your head it's like for me now having I told you about my my one year old I look at life now and being like wow, I had to go through all that. I went to AA and it just comes, all comes flooding back. Like if I didn't go through those bad times, I would not have this good time. I would not be in this good place now. Is right. that some, is that part of your uh, thought process yeah, today? Part of it, if, if I had let the bad times, which at some point were pretty bad, if I had let them consume me, I wouldn't be around to, to for this happy occasion. Was it just the... The rock and roll lifestyle that was alluring and it was just hard or was it other it, it, variables? it was the rock and roll lifestyle it, it was you know you know a, a lot of fast food and, and uh, most of your day was spent on the bus you know and a lot of times we we would play our show run back to the bus and change our clothes while the bus was moving driving to the ne the city we we're supposed to play at tomorrow the next day you know wow it, and so we we changed into clean clothes, but we didn't have a shower on the bus, so we still stunk from the stage, and we, and we were twelve hours like that. And it's funny you mentioned fast food; that was my addiction too. But once I turned forty, it like does not agree with me. Like I get exactly. physically sick, so it's, yep. it's the blessing in disguise. It's, I guess, it is a blessing in disguise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, as I have, I alluded to, I, I have to to ask, of course, because the six degrees, what I call a six degrees of GNR bacon. That's my jumping off point to talk to people like you and talk about mental health. And it was very cool to see Slash uh, first lobby to get you into the Hall of Fame. You put out a video. Yes, he did. Yeah. How, how long does your friendship go back with, with Slash? Uh, how well do you know him? We're, we're friends, acquaintance, slash friends. Not slash friends. <laughs> slash, slash friends. Dot, dash, dash friends. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, but 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 I, I I think that uh, over the years we we've done some some all star shows and stuff like that and, and I've got a chance to perform with him on stage for a few songs you know and uh, he's a very likable guy and, and obviously he's brilliant on guitar and and, and uh, so so we we've had a, a a friendship and a mutual respect for each other's work and and uh, and I was surprised when he was an advocate for for us getting into the hall of fame and, and it was a real pleasant surprise it is cool because as somebody who i guess made some like for me gravitate towards the more hard rock and i still mm -hmm. love foreigner as well it's nice to see that both sides or if you want to call it sides embrace yes. each other it's all just good music at the end of the yes, day it is guitar that, yes mm -hmm. during that time when you were already in established bands you know yes. and, uh you're in rock and roll, and then the Here Comes Guns N' Roses has their version of rock and roll. Just curious what you thought of maybe what Appetite for Destruction uh, when that came out, and, and as a vocalist to vocalist, what you thought of Axel's voice? Well, I I, I thought the uh, you know the, the the music was very good, just sloppy enough to be to 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 acknowledge that they were. Uh, very spontaneous in their playing, and, and uh, it was very good music, honestly. And, and uh, I think the songs were good too. Axel's voice, he had a he had a great range, uh, uh, but 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 I could tell that 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 he was because they toured a lot too. Uh, I could tell that he was damaging his vocal cords simply by the way he sang and, and uh you know i i know that when i sing at towards the end of the night some of my high range starts to go a little bit you you, you kind of have to acknowledge the 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 characteristics of your voice 
and 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 when they're tired, if you keep pushing them at that that level, th th they're damaged, and 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 you shouldn't be singing for the next six months. Your 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 ear, nose, and throat doctor will tell you that 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 they need rest and time to heal, and then get supple again. Be because a lot of times when you when you sing too often and too hard, there's something called nodes mm -hmm. that develop on your vocal cords. And they're like little tiny hard calluses. And when you go to sing a note, the air will come out, not the note. I really appreciate that. And it's, it's some insider baseball stuff. See, that's how I, I get it. I asked a question about GNR and I learned about the throat. So what Slash is doing is to go, go back to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Him along with Sammy Hagar, Chad Smith, and Demi Lovato are honoring you, honoring uh, Farner. And yes, I believe, I yeah, which is, did you pick that out? Did you guys say that? Um, I, I what no, song are they doing? Nothing to do with it. Oh, you nothing to do with it. So we you're were informed about who was going to honor us, and I'm I'm more than pleased with with the people that are. Uh, uh, you know, if, if I had my choices, I might have picked somebody else, but I have no problem with who's honoring us. They're all, they're all well known and respected rockers. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, to go again to be honored by the two gamut, uh, the two uh, spectrums of Sammy Hagar, who's I guess you can call a peer, right? Mm -hmm. yes, and, and, and and Demi Lovato, who's in this next wave, and I just think that's you know she's embracing this this uh this style of, of music. That's you, awesome. And did you know that that uh, I'm singing "I Want to Know What Love Is" with Kelly Clarkson? I mean, I did not know that and how, did you decide who you're going to do the duet with oh it was it was told to me i guess there's a pro guy who's producing the show and, and it, he along with foreigners managers uh picked the people that would be honoring us and and performing with us it would have been nice to be a part of that that uh, creative uh, uh part part of the 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 uh the, the show but but um you know, I, I guess if everybody put their hand in to be creative, uh, the show might not come off. <laughs> That's true. And so, I mean, so you, you got to kind of got to push, put your trust in the people who, who are looking out for your best interests. And uh, I, I, I was a little surprised at, at the choices at first, but, but, but the reality is they're great choices. It's true. I mean, Kelly Clarkson, uh, I'm not American. I'm not an American Idol guy. But she is like she deserves all the recognition that she's gotten. She's incredible. Whenever she covers a rock song, she nails it. So I'm really looking forward to. Well, I get to hear it live. You know, hopefully uh, Kelly doesn't drop an f bomb after. You know, I got to sing with Lou F and Graham. That's me. That'll be me on the dumb button on, on well, the radio. He, he, she got a mouth on. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know. She's from oh, Texas. Okay. <laughs> I'm just being silly. Um, and, and also just so you know, I'm, I'm doing my job at the same time. We're waiting for Mookie. I'll give him a heads up from, uh, from Norfolk, uh, Nebraska, We're waiting for him to pop in on zoom. So okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you up right up until Mookie. Okay, that's cool. Okay. What time is Mookie supposed to be on? He's supposed to be at nine twenty, So it's nine eighteen AM here yes. in, uh, yep. in Queens, New York. Uh, see, I like to break down the fourth wall and, you know, show people behind the scenes. So let me, I guess we'll ask this. Does this, where does it, because I know you're going to get a lot of congratulations, of course. You're going to get of how does this feel? Does this, like, where does this rank, I guess, among your achievements? Because you alluded to before, you at one point you were never thinking about the Hall of Fame. Does this rank uh, above I mean, your, your, your when, it, when it came into being, I, I thought about it and, and uh, I felt we had the credentials to be in the hall of fame uh, uh with our peers but there was some point when when bands like the cars and and uh and other people that opened for us when we were a headliner early on in our careers and i would say 90 percent of them have been in the hall for over 10 years already it's uh, it's it's such a long argument that's been had and i'm glad we don't really need to talk about it anymore as far as foreigner goes is there any other band like maybe we can give them like other than those shout outs that deserve you know now that we're in 
let's let's make sure these other bands, these other artists get in. Are there any ones that perhaps influence you that are not yet in that would mean a lot to you to see get in? Um, I don't know if the band Free is in. Paul Rogers, I interviewed him. He's not, which is insane to me. They're not. They're not in the hall. Not Paul Rogers. Bad companies I, in the hall. I don't think. I. I don't. I'll. I'll. Be, I will Google that just to make sure because I interviewed, um, Cynthia, both Cynthia and Paul. Yeah, they're and great. They were. And they were pretty upset about it because <laughs> they're. they're were they? About the. Um. I don't want to give too much away. Uh. He. I'm looking at. He turned down an offer to be inducted. I think there's like a behind the scenes feud. Oh, they, they wanted him to be inducted on his own? That's what I'm reading right now, just from the founding member. This is from October of last year. Again, I'm waiting for Mookie, who's usually on time to sign in. Uh, but whatever, it's more time for me. And so this, uh, he reveals that he actually turned down an invitation to the Rock Hall. This is, he spoke to Eddie Trunk about this, saying that, uh, yeah, they were making him. Oh, this was at the beginning. This was at the beginning. I remember this beginning was the beginning of the hall. This was at the beginning when it was being made, and he was like kind of like offended by how it was being made and saying, I don't want to be a part of this. Yeah. And I think that conversation has has hindered him actually getting into the Rock Hall because he offended somebody. So it's one of those stupid political things that overlooks his talent and what he's done. Yeah, it's not too not too far away from from uh, our story. That seems about right. <laughs> Which is well, we don't want to go down the negative path. Just to, no, uh, uh, you know what? I think these people need a little bit of thicker skin. They're dealing with rock and rollers, you know? You are right. You are right. Uh, well, you know, let me call Mookie. I want to make sure I, I can talk to you forever, but I, I'm on, I'll be hanging out with you for a couple hours, but just okay. through other stations. So Yeah, I want to make sure he didn't think it was tomorrow. <laughs> you never know. I've learned the hard way people do that to happen. So just, Lou, thank you so much for your time, and stand by for more interviews. with. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Can I leave it here, please? Can I leave it? Yeah. No? Yeah. See? Do you hear him saying no? He's already messing with the faders, so we're going to have to wrap up this uh, this episode with Lou Graham. Just what a amazing experience that I, I get to have. Uh, one, just through my job, and one, because of you. Getting to interview him on my podcast. No, no, no. Right? All right, so that does it for this episode of Appetite for Distortion. Baby Brownstone doesn't want to do any more, but more episodes to come. When will you see them? In the words of Axel Rose concerning Chinese democracy, I don't know as soon as the word, but you'll see it. Thanks to the lame-ass security, I'm going home.